What is up everyone? Thanks for joining me here today on Teslanomics Live. If you're watching this after the fact or if you're new here, this is where each week I break down the Tesla news and I recap what's happened, I give my thoughts on it, um, and I give any updates about the channel or anything else that I have going on. So uh, they typically run a bit longer and I do have a, a long section at the end for Q&A. So uh, I try to segment them and make them um, bite-sized but still pretty in-depth. And uh, thank you for joining me yet again. Of course, uh, what else is there to talk about right now other than uh, the Model 3 event last week? And I have to just say thank you to all of you first and foremost uh, about helping me get there by using my referral program and or my, my referral code and sharing that with other folks. Um, already, i um, almost 10% on my way to getting a free Roadster, which I don't even know how I feel about that, if that happens. Um, but uh, so you know, the referral program is back. They have clarified that folks like myself and other YouTubers that uh, share our knowledge and our love for the company and everything like that to really help kind of, um, um, you know, educate people and, and do those things, uh, that is okay for us to advertise or use uh, or, you know, promote our referral program. The things that they didn't like were the things like people taking out billboards or Google, Google AdSense or things like that. So, Anyways, um, there's a ton to talk about today, and so I figured let's just get right into it. Uh, first and foremost, we have our test rides, and these test rides were uh, fun. I can't believe I actually got to ride in a new Model 3, and what you're seeing here is some footage that I took of the cars as we were waiting in line, um, getting ready to, to go up and, and get in one and take it for a ride. Um, my impressions were that these cars are just absolutely gorgeous and that, um, you know, unlike maybe some of the photos and some of those things you've seen out there where it doesn't really do it justice, uh, I tried to get a lot of detail here in, in something, you know, um, even had this guy go clean it for me as I was uh, trying to film. So uh, these were all beautiful, amazing cars. I, I really can't emphasize how good they look in person uh, enough. And um, so whatever you've seen in the past, if you're you know skeptical about it or anything like that, uh, don't be. I uh, know this car is going to be just absolutely gorgeous. Uh, they had several colors on hand here. You saw the white, uh, the red, the black. Um, I think I saw a silver one too. Uh, I tried to get some close-up shots of the details on the outside. Uh, they do have some new um, press photos that they put out as well. So uh, th there's a lot more detail out there. Um, the one thing I don't think I got a shot of was the aero wheels uh, because I don't think any of the test cars um, had them. So I also got to go on a test ride myself. Um, and in doing so, uh, I, you know, I had them open the frunk and that was kind of nice because uh, they weren't doing this for a lot of people. I wanted to get the trunk and the frunk, but there was a big line. And so people were, um, uh, people were waiting and they wouldn't really let us kind of just, you know, stand there and film for an hour. So, uh, I, I was able to get them to, uh, to open that for us though. And, um, even got a shot of the VIN. You can see the one I wrote in here was blue. You can see how that opens up there. Um, have some other people taking photos. This guy really had his handful uh, with us when it came to um, when it, when it came to to filming and all that because we were all uh, YouTubers and media people. So um, yeah, it was you know they were super chill about it. Uh, we tried to open the trunk like I said and they, they wouldn't let us. Uh, but that's fine. Um, the, someone else, I think Tesla Geeks, uh, who have another awesome YouTube channel where they dig into this stuff. Um, you can go check out their channel, and uh, I think they have a great shot um, of the trunk. Uh, I was in VIN, I think it was 306. I can't quite tell uh, from here. Um, and then I didn't really get any interior footage. Uh, that's something I guess they actually didn't want people to do uh, because some of the other press weren't allowed to do it. So anyways, uh, but I did have some, some shots of the screen here. You know, I could say that the screen itself was incredibly... Um, incredible like it, it was small but it was perfectly placed to where it was like the right size um i, I don't know if you've ever actually um had a, a situation like that where you know the the screen is too big and it's kind of cumbersome and all that but uh this was perfectly placed um and one of the craziest things about it was how uh the the strip of 
uh, air vent on the back is all controlled from this display. So there literally are no buttons whatsoever. Everything is controlled from here, even which way the air is going or where the sound is or all those kind of things. Um, unfortunately, the, the drive was pretty quick. Uh, as you can see, uh, it was 11 p.m., so there wasn't a ton of... Uh, uh, a ton of <laughs> uh, detail that I could actually capture here. A lot of the other media companies were able to do that um, in, in in advance. So uh, that was my experience with the test rides. I really liked it. Um, you know, my, my my feeling about the car is it's pretty awesome. It's uh, uh, certainly a, a Tesla and, and lives up to that standard that a lot of us with Model S's and X's are used to. Um, and I think people are going to be really excited about it when they get it. Um, so, yeah, there's that. Now I want to get into talk uh, talking about the details which were released uh, a little bit after. And I'm going to go through these kind of in a high level because there are so many. Uh, and then on my website, uh, I have a link and I'll put it in the description below um, all the additional details uh, that we have. So first and foremost, uh, what I want to talk about are the different versions. So you have the standard version, which is $35,000. I'm sure a lot of you know that by now. Uh, they go 220 miles on on a, a single charge. Uh, that's EPA rated, and you know after owning a Tesla and stuff, I can tell you honestly, it's it's going to be less than that. Plus, you'll be going in trip mode, so you'll probably only get about 200 on a on a regular charge uh, on, on on a good day. Um, and then uh, these are going to be delivered starting in fall of 2017, so that's not too far away. Um, and this one goes zero to 60 in 5.6 seconds. So not nearly as fast as one of the upper end Model S's, but still a pretty quick car and pretty fast compared to other EVs, certainly, and even other uh, cars like BMW 3 Series and all that, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Now, the long range one is the $44,000 model, so it's $9,000 more. And yes, I have a lot of questions that you submitted about that, and we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, and this one goes 310 miles, so it actually gets 90 miles more, which is pretty significant. Now, these are already being delivered, I guess. You know, 30 of them were delivered there. Uh, and uh, they actually made, so I don't know if you've watched the full Elon um, presentation, but they've made 50 of them so far, they said. And uh, 20 of them are for engineering and testing and those kind of things. And then 30 are for customers. So those are the ones that were delivered. So uh, these are already being delivered. And, you know, employees are getting their configurator uh, uh, access and all that stuff. And this one goes 0 to 60 in 5.1 seconds. So just uh, a little bit quicker than the standard version. Now, uh, I'm going to call out a couple of things that, uh, you know, normally what I do is my long and my short here, and a couple of these things I'm short on, and I'll talk about that real quickly. Uh, I'm short on the paint, and this is because black is the only color that doesn't cost extra. So there are, you know, several other colors here. There's midnight silver metallic, deep blue metallic, silver metallic, pearl white multi-coat, and red multi-coat all of which cost an additional $1,000. So if you don't want uh, the black car, if you don't want a black car, then you're going to have to pay a 1000 bucks. So I'm short on this because I think that's kind of lame. I think that you should at least have two colors uh, that are available that don't you know, require an additional charge. So there's that. Then um, the next thing that I want to talk about are the upgrades. So uh, you have the premium upgrade for $5,000 the enhanced autopilot convenience features for $5,000 and the full self-driving for an additional three. So let's talk about that real quick because in order to get your car early as possible, what they call first production, you have to get the $44,000 upgrade, uh, or I'm sorry, the $44,000 long range version with the premium upgrade included. So $49,000. Now, the premium upgrade includes heated seating and cabin materials throughout, including open pour wood decor and two rear USBs. 12-way, and I'm reading this from the website if I sound like I'm reading it from a website. 12-way power adjustable front seats, steering column and side mirrors with custom driver profiles, premium audio with more power, tweeters, surround sound, and subwoofer. All right. Tinted glass roof with ultra, ultra, ultraviolet and infrared protection. 
auto dimming, power folding, heated side mirrors, LED fog lamps, center console with covered storage and docking for two smartphones. So that's what the premium package includes. And it's, I mean, it's decent, you know, I don't know if I would actually get the premium package here. Um, so it, my, myself, but I do want to get my car earlier. So I'll probably end up doing it anyways. And those things are all great. I just don't know if I'm, you know, if I care that much about all of them to pay the $5,000 personally. Now the enhanced autopilot, uh, is the $5,000, uh, same as the model S I believe. Um, and you know, this is the one that'll match speed and traffic conditions. It'll keep you in the lane. So it has auto steer and auto braking. It'll automatically change lanes, transition from one freeway to another, exit the freeway, and self-park at your destination. So that's pretty awesome. And of course, this is going to get better and better over time. Now, the $3,000 for the self-driving, this is something that you're basically buying now, but then will you know use later on. So laws and things like that aren't really caught up with the ability of a car to do this. Tesla has said that they've already figured it out, that the car can do it and that this November to December, they should have one that actually goes from uh, somewhere in LA to somewhere in New York uh, without a person having to touch the steering wheel uh, or controls whatsoever. So yeah, that's pretty awesome. Um, I don't think I'll get the self-driving, but I will get the other two. So you know, it's gonna be a pretty expensive car for me. Now, one thing I didn't mention yet was the wheels. So uh, in addition to the uh, upgraded paint, if you want anything but the aero wheel, meaning the sport wheel, you have to pay an additional 1500 bucks. Uh, I'm kind of short on that because I think the aero wheels are hideous, but at the same time, I mean, I guess it's fine. I guess it's, it's not the worst thing in the world. And I am curious though, since I'm getting 21 inch arachnids from my Model S through the referral program, thank you yet again, will I be able to take my 19 inch uh, ones on my S now and put them on it? Cause that would be nice and save me 1500 bucks. Um, so that's something that I'm going to ask Tesla about uh, sometime soon. Now t Elon showed some other cool videos there and I want to, uh, I want to show this one here because I think safety is something a lot of people ask about. And here's a video showing uh, the side crash test. I, I don't even need to narrate this. I mean, you can just see which car you would rather be in um, in in this kind of a kind of a crash. So the Volvo S60 is the second safest car on the road, apparently. Um, so there you go. And when Elon uh, showed this at the event, it was uh, a pretty insane um, uh, applause, a pretty ruckus. So. Uh, yeah, the, the engineering team uh, did an amazing job here. And this is part of Tesla's secret sauce, which I'll probably do another video on um, down the road anyways. So when we take a look at the interior, this is something that I know a lot of people were worried about, but after being in it now, um, Trevor from Model 3 Owners Club did a really great write-up where, and he, you know, of course, this is his thing. Um, he was touching and feeling everything like that. The interior of the car is is really nice. Um, I was really impressed with it. Uh, these are the official photos here. These aren't mock-ups or anything. This is like the real deal. Um, and the, talking about the, the all-glass roof, as you can see here, uh, they, they did an amazing thing with the back windshield. Uh, I believe this is similar to what you can get on the X. But it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful car, um, really inside. Um, and out. So, so yeah, I, I think people are going to love this car. Looking at the exterior here again, these are just the shots uh, that, that Tesla released, the press photos. Uh, yeah, I mean, it looks, it, still I see these angles where I'm not in love with it, but in person, um, I, I think the final production versions are, are, are fantastic and people are just going to be totally, totally in love with them. Now, I wanted to compare this, the, the Model 3, to the Model S, and thankfully Tesla has helped me do this. So let me jump over here to the web page, which has these details. So on here, if I scroll down, you can take a look. Uh, and first, I just want to talk about the production timeline. So the production timeline here is uh, the ramp, the S-curve. And if you recall, I made a similar S-curve. And actually, a lot of people were giving me shit about not having the top of the S curve be at 10,000 because that's where they said uh, what they want to ramp up to, 10,000 cars per week. 
Well, if you can see here, their production timeline looks very, very similar to mine. Uh, I'll probably do a follow-up video on this. And granted, this is really just an illustration. Uh, but if you remember what I had, it was very, very similar to where we're looking at about 5,000 by the end of the year. And that is almost at the top of the S-curve. From there, it's going to be micro little incremental improvements to improve uh, that, that production line if they're even able to get there with just the Fremont factory. My thinking is that they will actually need to find a new factory, an additional factory to produce that many cars per week. Just because I, after being there personally, um, I, I don't see it. Uh, now, in looking at some of the old, old numbers from the Numi plant, it doesn't doesn't seem like it makes sense. And at the bottom of the screen there, of course, um, you know, because what we'll get into here is the comparison. That's the link to my referral code. So if you or anyone you know is going to buy a Model S, especially now that you've seen the price of the Model 3, um, please go ahead and use that. You'll get a thousand bucks off plus free supercharging, which is pretty awesome. So here are uh, the Model S and the Model 3 side by side. I just wanted to run through this comparison from the Tesla website because I think it's pretty good and it really helps paint the picture of it. Now, take a look at the the very the um, size of the car uh, at the top. Uh, it, it's it's actually quite quite a bit different. Um, you know, it, it's it's over uh, 12 inches uh, difference there. So it, it's one of those things that you know I don't know. I mean, it's a smaller car, but the interior is actually pretty big as well. Now, the timing, of course, on the Model S, you can get one in seven days, which is crazy. Um, custom orders take a month to two months, but the new from inventory um, are, are awesome. And by the way, uh, the, you can I was looking at it just before I got on here. The new inventory of cars are, you can find some reasonably priced 75Ds or 75 kilowatt hour batteries there uh, that really rival the price of the Model 3, but you're getting a lot more car. So that's why I have my referral code up because I actually think a lot of people are going to see this and say, you know, Model 3, okay, when I spec it out, it's going to be $60,000 before tax incentives. And if I want to wait for all-wheel drive, I might not be getting much of a tax incentive. So why don't I just get a Model S now, get my full tax incentive, and it's you know maybe $5,000 more for maybe double the car. So I really think this is going to be a compelling choice that people are going to have to make between the two. So you can be guaranteed I'm going to be digging into this in much more detail. So the Model 3, of course, you need to wait 12 to 18 months. The performance, I mean, these, you know, the Model S is just a smoke and fast car, even on the low end there, even at the slow, slower version. Um, and then, you know, the range, yeah, you go 249 to 335. That's going to be fine for the majority of people out there. I don't think uh, plus 300 miles is really necessary in a lot of situations. Uh, me, I do have a couple road trips that I take several times per year for work, and those require me to need, you know, that extra extra mileage. So, yeah, for me it makes sense. And if you have a situation like that, uh, then I totally would go for the biggest battery you could possibly afford. Now, of course, uh, the Model S, you get uh, free, free and limited supercharging um, with a referral like mine. Um, and then, you you know, the Model 3, you're going to have to pay. So it won't be a lot, but you will have to pay if you need to use it. Um, the, pa the seating and all that, you know, you get the Model S. It's basically the same, honestly. They say plus two children. Yes, fine, rear-facing seats. Uh, and that's super cool. I think I'll maybe add that to my car, you know, in a couple of years when my, my son is older. But, you know, I don't know, really, it's a bigger car, so it's more more spacious inside, of course. But really, I don't think it's that big of a difference there. Now, twice as much uh, trunk space is amazing. Um, in fact, my Model S has more storage space than my wife's SUV. And that, to me, is such a major thing because when we get our three, she's going to take my car and we'll be have a great family car. Now, the Model 3 has a very small frunk, and if you look at the, the rear trunk um, from some of the other videos people posted, it's it's good. It's a good-sized trunk, but it's nowhere near what you can do uh, with the Model S. So, um, of course, the Model S has uh, two displays, and the Model 3 only has one. Um, and then the Model 3 specs are laid out right here. Um, pr pretty good. And uh, it's a it's a decent-sized car um, it's on the interior, uh, but, you know, has a small outer uh, footprint because... They don't have as big of uh, you know requirements for having like a really big engine and transmissions and things like that. 
the the ratio of outer uh, footprint to inner room is is really efficient. So. Um, yeah, th there's the comparison of the Model 3 to the Model S. I would go check this out on Tesla's website um, if you haven't yet, uh, of course, after we're, we're done here. Um, now, the other thing I saw that was interesting out there was this battery comparison. And this was coming to us from Bloomberg. And on Bloomberg, what they have is... Uh, what they've done is they've taken the vehicle model, the range, the MSRP, and then just divided those two to figure out essentially the price per mile. Now, what you have here at 310 miles on the Tesla Model 3 uh, Long Range Edition, they're calling it Range Plus, I kind of like that, uh, you have essentially the cheapest one. So the Chevy Bolt EV is next in line, and that's still pretty good. I actually still think that's a great car for a lot of people. It's very practical. Um, and then the standard one, you know, comes in in third place. So uh, this is this is good news. I would say, you know, people are, are really concerned about some of the things about the price here. But when you break it down like this, I think it, it paints a clear picture of essentially what you're getting uh, for your money, you know, even when you compare the other Teslas out there. So... I think I think Bloomberg did a great job with this, and, and it highlights uh, really the mass market appeal of the Model 3. Now, Bloomberg also had a good comparison that I wanted to show you here. I'm not going to go into too much detail, but this has um, the Model 3, uh, BMW 320i, and a Mercedes-Benz C300, which are all kind of in the same class of vehicles. They're the lower-end luxury market, so uh, I think they might call them affordable or accessible luxury. So... When you look at the price, of course, the, the BMW is a little bit cheaper. The Tesla's, you know, right in that range. Um, you're going to get, if you get it early enough, you'll get incentives on the Model 3, which are great. Um, so it would actually lower the price a lot from, from compared to the other ones there. And then, you know, taking a look under the hood, you, it's this, you know, fastest one out of all of them. Um, of course, gets the best fuel economy, those kind of things. It's going to be the cheapest. They didn't mention, but it's going to be the cheapest to fuel as well because uh, electricity, no matter where you are, is far cheaper than gas. So after that, you have, um, you know, the size of the vehicle. It's comparable, I would say. You know, it doesn't seem incredibly small or, or anything like that. Um, but it, it is uh, the heaviest car, of course, because of that giant battery. Um, when it comes to interior headroom and all those things, it's on par. It's almost the best. Um, and then trunk capacity, it is the best. So, you know, again, for a smaller car like this, the trunk and, and all that is is pretty decent. Um, you get an eight-year, 100,000-mile warranty uh, for the powertrain. Um, and, you know, it, the driver assistance options, of course, has autopilot, but it also has full self-driving, which none of these other cars will ever have. So there's, you know, that. <laughs> so, I, again, if you look at it this way, I think you know what it's not exactly a honda civic um but it does compete with uh, some of the more affordable luxury uh mass market vehicles out there like the bmw 3 series and the mercedes-benz c-class all right well, i'm going to take a drink of water and i'm going to start the q a and thank you to everyone that submitted your questions in advance um, if you uh, want to know how to do that, get on my email list at teslanomics.co. Uh, there's uh, thousands of people on there now. So when I send this out, I get a ton of stuff and a ton of feedback. And I just, I, I really do love it. Um, I had over 130 questions submitted uh, just this morning um, about this live stream today. So I'm going to get into it here. I'm going to go through these, uh, all the questions I got, and then I'm going to ask, or I'm sorry, I'm going to look at some of your questions in the live chat. So if you do have a question you want me to answer, hold on to it for now. Um, and then, uh, I'll, I'll let you know when it's time to do that, uh, in the live chat. So water first. So Mike asks, when will the model three be available in Tesla showrooms to test drive? Um, I believe there was a tweet or an announcement a while ago that it would be Q3 of this year. And so, yeah, look for that very soon. I wouldn't be surprised if some are already showing up um, in, in the next month for sure. Uh, but, yeah, it, they should be there probably well before you'll, you'll need to configure yours uh, unless you're a you know, Tesla or SpaceX employee. Uh, Bob asks, could you review the federal tax credit situation again? Now that most of us have an idea from Tesla's site as to when we will get our cars, we are all trying to figure out now if we will be eligible for the tax credit. Well, I was going to, I may do a video on this, but I just did one not too long ago. So maybe it's not worth rehashing it yet. Uh, so there's a lot of assumptions here, right? 
Tesla is extremely close already at hitting that 200,000th car mark. And if you're not from the U.S. and you're unfamiliar, uh, in the United States, we have a federal tax credit of $7,500 at $7,500. Um, up to the 200,000 cars from a single manufacturer. So what that means is that Tesla being only, you know, only making electric vehicles is close to hitting that. And once they hit it, that credit starts to phase out. So just to recap how it works, um, if Tesla were to hit the 200,000th mark in Q4 of this year, which is and that's what I'm estimating. Some people are saying that'll be a disaster. Uh, others are thinking um, early in Q1, they may hold out and start shipping European cars or something. I think they're going to be smart about it. But um, I'm assuming, I'm thinking they're going to hit it in Q4 this year. And so if they do that, uh, every car that's after the 200,000th car that's still produced within Q4 gets the full tax credit. Every car that they make after that in the Q1 of next year also gets it. Then for the next two quarters, it goes down by 50%. Then for the next two quarters after that, it goes down to 25%. Um, so I have a video explaining this with charts and graphs and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, if you Google it, there's some probably good websites out there that have it. So uh, that's essentially how it works. My estimate is that it will be, they'll hit it this, this fourth quarter. If they don't, um, or if they can somehow strategically not hit it, that would be ideal. But if they don't actually hit 200,000 cars by the end of this year, they may be having other issues going on with um, with with their stock and those kind of things and their finances. I mean, yes, I'm sure you know they're smart and they understand how this works, but at the same time, they need to make money and and they're they're still a company that needs to survive. So yeah. Um, I, I think that's when it's going to happen. And so depending on, on where you're where you're looking at, uh, you may get a reduced tax credit, especially if you're looking for the all wheel drive option. Whatever happened to the matte black Model 3 color, Joby asks. Uh, yeah, I thought that was super cool. I think that was just maybe a prototype and maybe the matte black hides some imperfections or something like that. Of course, you can go get your car wrapped or do whatever you want. You don't have to uh, you know, get it from them that way. You can just get the standard and then probably go spend that money elsewhere. Julia asks, I'm on the East Coast, meaning it will take longer to get my Model 3. I'd love to pick up my car in California and drive it home, hopefully getting it a bit sooner. I'd love to visit family along the way. Can I do that? Uh, well, it depends whether or not your family wants you to visit them, I suppose. Uh, no, just kidding. So uh, I have heard of somebody doing this. So call Tesla if you can, um, email them, whatever you can, however you can get a hold of them and ask them. So I have had somebody tell me that this that they are open to this. I don't know if it'll mean you'll get it sooner, but you may be able to save some money or, you know, maybe a week sooner or something like that. Uh, Seth asks, are you getting uh, all-wheel drive or rear-wheel drive? I am getting rear-wheel drive uh, for two reasons. Uh, one, um, I, I want my car sooner. And two, uh, I don't care about all-wheel drive. I live in Southern California, and it never snows. Uh, it really doesn't even get that cold. And so I have no need for all-wheel drive. So uh, I understand that, you know, people, and, you know, before you jump on me about that, better traction control, better mileage, you know, like five more miles or something, or 10 more miles like you get on the S, whatever. Uh, All-wheel drive would be cool, but I'm willing to pay maybe 500 bucks for it. And I know it's going to be well above 500 bucks. So yeah, I'm getting rear-wheel drive. Kevin asked three questions, and one of them I'm going to answer in detail. Uh, I'm not sure which model to get. Is the extra 90 miles worth the, the $10,000? It's actually $9,000, sure. Uh, are there any details on financing yet? Not that I've seen. Um, I live in an apartment complex, so charging overnight won't be ideal. Do you have another solution that might work? So... Uh, I'm mean, going to answer these in reverse. Um, I live in an apartment complex, so charging overnight won't be ideal. Correct. Uh, find other public ones. There are some free ones out there. You can use those. Uh, move, move into a house, buy a house, uh, or you know, uh, use the superchargers in those, which will be uh, fast and convenient, uh, but they do cost money. So there's that. Um, I haven't seen any details on financing yet. I would recommend getting your own loan and just showing up with a check. That's my own personal opinion. Don't take my advice as a financial advisor, please. Um, and number one, I'm not sure which model to get is the extra 90 miles worth it. So uh, the ni extra 90 miles are worth it if you go on road trips or if you want to go on a road trip uh, and and use it. So like I said, I, you know, I'm in San Diego. I go back to Phoenix. It's uh, from point A to point B for me is about 400 miles. So 
Um, right now in my Model S 60, which has 200 miles only, I actually have to stop three times because once I get into Phoenix, there aren't really any places to stop. And Phoenix is a really big, uh, geographically, you know, uh, large uh, city. So for me, uh, yes, I, I will be getting the extra 90 because it is absolutely worth it. Now, the question of whether or not it's worth it considering the price, because I see a lot of people asking this. In fact, I had probably, you know, dozens and dozens of questions that I saw. Let's take a look and do a little math here. Let me make sure this is showing up right. Cool. So if you take a look at the Model S, you have the two options that are available now, the 75D and the 100D. There is a 75 option, but just wanted to be apples to apples here. You're looking at 259 miles of range uh, versus 335 miles of range. So that's 76 additional miles you get by upgrading from the 75 to the 100. So the price difference, however, is $23,000 different. Now, I know some of you are going to say that there's other differences and things that are included. Yes, 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 fine. But these are what you can buy. So let's do the math on that. And you're looking at about $303 per mile more um, that you get between the Model S. Now, when you do that same math on the Model 3, you're looking at only $100 per mile because you have 90 miles difference with $9,000 um, difference in, in the cost of the car. So yeah, you're doing pretty well. Um, people are complaining about this, but when you look at it in the context here, it's actually a better deal. You know, remember back in elementary school, they would say, you know, should you buy the, the 16 ounce uh, thing of mac and cheese or the 25 ounce mac and cheese? And you have to do the math by dividing it. That's essentially what you should do when you're really trying to think about is that, you know, reasonable or not. So it is a lot of money, you know, don't get me wrong, $9,000 is not something I just have laying around. But uh, comparatively, it's it's not um, it's not bad. It's a really great deal. So it's probably the best the best bang for your buck when it comes to all the other Teslas that are available. Paul asks, uh, does all the panoramic glass roof in the Model Three make the cabin too hot, and is it the glare of the sun an issue? Uh, no. Um, so I have a panoramic glass roof, or I don't know what you call it. It's not the all glass roof like the X, but you know my my S has all you know. 100% glass, basically, just with the sunroof and those little support bars, just kind of like the Model 3 does. Now, uh, this uh, does not make it too hot because they have some really, really great UV protection on there. I've never even noticed it, and I live in a place that gets reasonably warm and is very, very sunny. Um, so, yeah, it, it, it's not an issue at all. Um, and then of course, you know, if the cabin being hot, well, you can just turn on the AC because it doesn't require the engine to run and, you know, uh, is really efficient. So yeah. thanks for the question, Paul. Lucas asks, how many kilowatt hours does the big battery have? Ah, and I chose this one because I want to share a message from your, uh, lovely Tesla PR department about this. Uh, and Elon spoke about it as well. Um, the reason they haven't announced these and they're not going to have different badging, um, you know, like they have on the S and the X, uh, which I wouldn't be surprised if they start getting rid of that. So it's more consistent as a brand, but, uh, they're getting away from the notion of, uh, the size of the battery and they're just getting towards, uh, the, the, uh, the range of the car. Now, this doesn't disprove my, this doesn't disprove, this doesn't prove or disprove uh, the rumor that I heard about different and bigger battery cells. However, uh, that's essentially uh, what's going on there. So we don't know uh, how many kilowatt hours it has or doesn't have, uh, but that, and we probably won't uh, unless somebody just tears it apart, which I would have a hard time letting somebody do to my car. So yeah, so we'll, we'll find out uh, maybe some point in time, but um, it's not something that they're really focused on. Thanks for the question. Mario asks, uh, I live in Miami and drive roughly 50 miles a day for work. And every two to three months, I drive up to Orlando to go to Disney with the kids. Awesome. 230 miles away. Should I go for the higher mileage or rely on destination or superchargers? Well, it depends uh, how old your kids are. Uh, but yeah, I mean, if you're going every two to three months, I would go with the, with the bigger one because that extra time to stop uh, is going to, you know, it'll add maybe 30 minutes to your trip. So it's not, not a tremendous amount. Uh, but you know, it does have, it does suck. So, but uh, you had destination chargers. Absolutely. So wherever you're going, I would make sure, <coughs> excuse me, when you get there that you have a destination charger. And then if you need to stop the superchargers, if there's one in between would be super helpful. Thanks for the question, Mario. Steven asks, if we are expecting our model three to be delivered in the fall, can we defer until the dual motor is available? Uh, yes, I believe so. Um, so in fact, what I want to do is I want to go back to 
the Tesla Model 3 page, and I want to show you what you can do. And you should have this, everyone that has a reservation holder, there's a section here that says check your estimated delivery. Uh, and when you click that, it should take you on here. And I have two different uh, reservations. And you can see them here. So I have my first production one, which will be October to December of this year uh, at 49,000. And then the other one is 220 mile range. This is the standard battery from December to February of next year. So uh, that's actually not that long to wait. And then on the right is where you can find the dual motor all wheel drive choice of 210 or 310 mile range. Um, meaning that both of them will have the dual motor option, uh, and that's June to August of 2018. So that's definitely going to be in the range where the uh, the uh, tax credit may be running out. So there's that. So there you go. So that's that's uh, essentially how I would go check. I'd go to the go to the Model Three page and take a look at that. Thanks for the question, Stephen. Martin asks, if you are checked, if you check the Model 3 in person and compare it with your Model S, do you think that worth to buy one with 59000 before the incentive? Thank you. Um, now, I think you're just asking me which one would, would I buy. Well, man, you know, it, it is funny. After I got back uh, home from the, from the event and I sat in my Model S, I was like, oh, this is so nice. This is such a nice car, and and, I, and it's like big, and I have tons and tons of room. I'm like, oh, this is really nice. So I think this is a really difficult question. Now I have a Model S already, and it's almost paid off. So you know, I, I don't want to have too many, too much debt. So I don't want really want to have buy like a new S or another one, and all that. So the three is definitely what I'm going to go with. Plus, I want to be able to share that experience and share everything about it with you guys. But um, at the same time, I could see this being a very difficult decision. You know, for me, I, I, I would I would probably boil it down to what is, um, in terms of the size of the car, what's more important to you? So do you need more storage uh, because you have a, a family and things like that? Uh, or do you need, you know, the rear-facing child seats, things like that? Or is a smaller car better for you? You know, I, I know some folks that live in, in real big cities and parking is a nightmare. And so they need a smaller car. So the three is better in that regard. You know, forget the price. So I guess what I'm getting at is you can get a Model S, a, a lower end, you know, a Model S for about the same price as you can get a higher end Model 3. So really price, let's just say you can you can kind of forget about the price and compare them on things that are, that are other things that are important to you and then decide that way. That's what I would go do. Thanks for the question. Jim asks, as one of the many who stood in line on 331.16 in the US, we put the dates in all different orders. That's March 31st of 2016. Uh, to pay 1K deposit on a car we hadn't seen, we were excited about Elon's promise to get something cool. Any word yet? Signature red? I think it's going to be free supercharging, um, and I haven't heard a word yet. Uh, you will know probably the same time I know, which will be a tweet. And honestly, even though uh, I, I do have a relationship with the Tesla PR folks, uh, you know they've even made it clear like a lot of times they find out about things as Elon tweets them as well. So that's just kind of how it goes. Uh, my guess is free supercharging because I do believe the cost to Tesla of offering that is is relatively low. And but on the consumer side, it's a really big uh, a, a, you know win. Uh, also, maybe it could be free autopilot or something like that. So uh, we'll see. Troy asks, hey, Ben, just wondering if you could comment on the leg room in the front and rear. I'm six foot five. Uh, so, hey, Troy, thanks for joining me yet again. Um, I can't really comment on the back. Um, I was just in the front, but it actually seemed pretty big. If you go watch my vlog about the event, I met this guy, Andrew, who was probably six three, six four, maybe. So not quite six five, but you know, a taller guy. And uh, I didn't have it in the video, but we were chatting about it, and he he said that the legroom was good for him. Um, you know, honestly, if you if you're comfortable in a BMW 3 Series or Mercedes C Class, you'll be comfortable here. Uh, there's really nothing that crazy about it. But I will say, if this is a real big concern for you like maybe go get in one of those cars and see how it feels if it feels tiny and you can't handle it you can get a lower end or even a cpo model s uh for the same price as you could a model 3 so honestly um you know that may be a better option um because you'll have more, more room in there for sure lou asks what is the cost of tesla 3 all-wheel drive we don't know yet uh but if you look at how they've 
copied the pricing model for the model uh, from the Model S on some other things, we can assume that it would be the same price as the Model S. So I would I would assume that. Um, and then if it's lower than that, then awesome. Um, you know, th th then then you're kind of in a good space. Uh, Jeffrey asks, after experiencing the production Model Three, has it changed your desire to purchase one? Any was anything different? Um, yeah. You know, the interior, it's so clean and and modern and simple. I don't know. Like, um, if I had to choose, let's say I could either get an S or a 3 uh, without having to worry about the cost difference, I would go with an S. Uh, I, think it's, I think it's a better car, uh, absolutely. And I think Tesla uh, agrees with that, right, if you see how they talk about these things. So um, I still want the Model 3 because I want the longer range. Um, for my road trips that I have to take every year. Uh, also, it'd be weird, I think, to have two of the same car. That'd be, I don't know. Um, and, and me and my wife, we want to go all electric. You know, it's part of our family sustainability plan. We have solar already. We have a couple power walls coming. Um, and then we have uh, one, one EV. We're going to add another EV. So we'll be all electric there. Um, and we should be good. So... Cool. Well, thank you, everyone, um, on the email list for submitting your questions in advance. Uh, now I'm here to take your questions on the live chat. So I'll give you a couple seconds here. I'll take uh, a pregnant pause, drink of water, and um, let you guys ask your questions. Super chat is enabled, so if you want to be sure that I answer your question, uh, click on that little money icon and put a, a buck or two bucks up there, and then um, I'll, I'll make sure to you know it'll pop up and, and stick there for a while. So uh, give me a second here as these come in, and I will um, get to drinking my water. Okay. Andrew asks, Han Hauser, Hi Ben, thanks for the great content. How do you think a future resale of the Model 3 will compare to the Model S and X given the amount of cars added to the fleet? You know, it's a good question. Um, it's pure speculation at this point because it's so far out. But I would say by the time that they're making, by the, by the end of 2018, like let's say they can clear through all of these reservations, uh, I, I will say that, that they'll be um, it, it, it'll be, I don't know, it'll be good. The resale value will be good because it'll still be hard to get one, but it won't be uh, unreal, you know, but until they're clear of all the reservations, I think you're going to have, um, you're going to have a lot of, uh, like appreciative, uh, value essentially. Right. So if I could mine in October, I could probably sell it to somebody else, uh, you know, that month for more than what I paid for it. Right. So there is that. So are you surprised about the all wheel drive release date? How does that affect your delivery estimator? Uh, well, I, I haven't updated my delivery estimator. I don't think I'm going to because they officially have one now. Uh, the Model 3 Owners Club does have a survey they're doing. So if you guys aren't um, in that, please go check that out. That's something that they have that uh, I think will be interesting to see uh, what people are deciding to do, which option and when and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, there you go. Um, do you think all-wheel drive will be introduced while the full tax credit is still available? No, I do not. Uh, I am a super early reservation holder and a Tesla owner living in California, so I get it super early. And for me, it's June to August of 2018. So at that point, I think I might be, I actually might have, might be okay in, in that time frame. Um, but soon after that, it'll be, it'll be gone. So yeah, there's that. All right. Hey there. Uh, no, no Maragam. Sorry, I can't get your name there. Thanks, thanks for the, the the donation there. Hey Ben, how would you say the interior quality is versus say an Audi or a BMW? Oh man, oh, you know I don't even know if Audi and BMW are in the same class. I I, I love uh, I I love Audi. Uh, probably my favorite interior of a car. Uh, surprisingly, Volvo is really good too. Uh, Beamer's also good, but I think Audi kind of takes the cake there. I, I think they still do. I mean. It's nice on the interior of the three, but it's it's not a premium finishes, right? So, the, like they don't have leather and those kind of things. You know, they went vegan and all that. So, yeah, I I don't think it it, it beats Audi or BMW. I think those guys, uh, in terms of the the finishings, uh, I will say though. If you aren't a fan of buttons and knobs and you think that stuff is old and clunky like a BlackBerry phone versus an iPhone, then yeah, this is the iPhone version of cars. So yeah, I absolutely think that 
Um, the interior kind of design is the best of any car I've ever seen. Uh, you know, save maybe the Model S. I think they're they're pretty pretty comparable. Uh, but the quality of the materials I don't think is as good as Audi or BMW. So I would rank it third if those are my my three options there. Uh, is a roof rack available? I don't know. I imagine there will be some way to put a roof rack on. Um, hello, Ben. Would the price of EAP increase if activated after delivery? Uh, you know, I, I assume so, uh, but I, I haven't seen that. Um, as I guess some or whoever first gets a configurator will probably will, it'll probably have those options on there. So yeah, there you go. I'm from Finland, and heated seats are kind of mandatory. Do you think they offer the winter package for the Model 3? I don't think they'll have a winter package for the Model 3, but the premium package does have heated seats, so you should, should be good to go. I think it has heated back seats as well. Go check out Trevor from Model 3 Owners Club. I think he did a really good job uh, going into those details. Uh, and th thanks for the question. Let's see. Is the AP worth the five thousand? Considering the the three costs thirty five k. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, I, I don't actually don't have autopilot, but I will absolutely want to get it uh, because it's pretty awesome. Especially, you know, I guess if you don't drive or if you live in a more rural area, it's probably not worth it. Um, but yeah, absolutely, because that that's your ticket to self driving. So there you go. Um, Oliver asks, is there a front trunk in the Model 3? Yes. In fact, if you go rewind, watch this video earlier or watch my vlog, uh, yes, uh, you can see that I, I, I got some shots of that. Uh, would the driver's side seat have a heating without premium upgrade? I don't think so, James Anthony. Uh, Dante asks, should we be concerned with the service availability with all the new Teslas hit the road? No, not, not actually. Um, I, I, I covered this in a previous one where uh, Tesla is now, I think, tripling the amount of service centers and people and all that kind of stuff. So the service sh shouldn't really be uh, much of an issue. Uh, I do know, though, that certain parts of the world, uh, like Spain, for example, it is it is harder. So there you go. Uh, what do you say about the Model 3 you can buy right now? One of the Tesla workers said his new Model 3 he just got last day for sale. Huh. I'd love to see that. If uh, That's P. Hines' question. Um, if you have the link to that, I'd love to see it. Uh, I am going to talk with a lawyer tomorrow about the option of selling uh, selling reservations. And so I, I'll have a video coming out in a week or so. I'll try to get some official answers from a lawyer and see what the deal is. Uh, do you think the same price of the accessories on the Model S is reasonable? You know, uh, some of them, yes. Some of them, no. So, yeah, I, I, I like uh, autopilot. Yeah, of course. It, 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 there's really no difference. I'm actually surprised that things like autopilot aren't a subscription service. Um, that's the, the like a SaaS business model. That's a much better way to do that. So, uh, anyways, uh, what do you think the standard roof will be? Uh, I think the standard roof will be a a, 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 um, a steel one or, or whatever, aluminum. It'll be metal. I don't think it'll be glass. So, Hey, Tyler, thanks for the support. Tyler asks, your concerns about no instrument cluster gone? You know, I, I never really had uh, concerns about an instrument cluster. Uh, but, yeah, the, the screen is so perfectly placed uh, that, yeah, and, 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 you know, the whole left side is essentially the driver's information. And so... It's almost, it's almost like it's very it's not in your foveal vision you know you're direct uh, but but it's it's is just right outside of it just like you you know your binacle dashboard would be as well I don't I don't see a problem with it at all yeah uh, thanks for the question and the support Ross asks where are the air conditioning vents at there's actually a strip and I think somebody has good footage of this there's a strip along um, uh, the the dash and in there it it it, uh, it it adjusts based on the on the um, what you do on the screen. So if you want it to go more to the left or more to the right or whatever, there's just a little thing that that you know you move your finger around and it changes where the air goes and how much and all that kind of stuff. It's pretty cool. So it's actually, I mean, it's funny. They were like super jazzed about it. And I was like, ah, oh, cool. How about you know the battery and stuff? So um, do I have to pay monthly payment for a Tesla? Uh, it depends. Uh, when do you think the cars of Tesla are going to be available for the common Joe? Yeah, uh, I heard I saw an article saying that Tesla would be doing another cheaper car at some point in time. I don't know. Um, you know, I would say maybe a used Model Three. Uh, you maybe get for twenty thousand or less. It's you know five years from now or something like that. Um, Ron asks, "Have you seen the standard upholstery? What is it like?" I, I'm I'm actually not sure. It was eleven p.m. when I got there. It was super dark, uh, so I can't really say. Um, yeah, there you go. Uh, let's see what else. 
Uh, I think there's a next gen roadster on the production ramp uh, map a few years down the road. Yeah, there definitely is because it's part of the referral program. So yeah, there, that's definitely. Uh, do you think now is a good moment to buy Tesla stock? Uh, hello from Germany or hello to Germany. You know, I, I can't actually say, uh, you know, I, I'm, I don't want to be here in the U S we have laws about things like that. I can't give financial advice. Uh, I am a stock holder and I am long on the company, meaning I think that they're going to be successful long term. Um, but the way the stock market works and the way companies work, uh, don't always operate. So, uh, don't take my word for it. Uh, is Tesla coming to India? Yes. At some point in time, who knows when, uh, let's take a look. Y is going to be more than the three. I believe so. The price of supercharging. Hey, I have a, a video on that where, uh, so Tesla has announced it and I built a little tool you can use to click on different states, plan your route or whatever, uh, or in different countries and different provinces and stuff. And, and, and you can do that and, and see uh, the different price. It's usually uh, kind of the average price of electricity. So something like 19 cents per kilowatt hour in California or something like seven cents per kilowatt hour in Texas or whatever. So. Any word on the cost of the three warranty packages? Um, I don't believe, let me check the pricing information, warranty. No, I just see the two warranty um, lines here, the four year, 50,000 mile limited warranty, battery warranty, 8,000 uh, or eight year, uh, 100,000 mile or 120,000 mile with the long range. Yeah, I don't see anything about um, an upgraded or added warranty. So yeah, uh, let's see. Hey, Red, 878787. Do you know if we can sleep flat in the Model 3? Yes, I saw a photo of this. Uh, somebody did a rendering. Or is it on the Model 3 webpage? Um, somebody somebody had one where, um, where where you can sleep in the back. I forget how tall it is, but uh, man, that, that'd be a tight fit. Uh, I, I suppose you could, but I probably wouldn't uh, personally. I think if, that, if that's something that you're interested in, I would go with the Model S for sure. Thanks for the question and the support. Um, what happens when the screen cracks or breaks turn black? I don't know. I don't know how or if that would happen. I guess they would fix it. Um, let's see. Hola, Sal. Como estas? Um, anything on a hitch? You know, I don't know if they actually have uh, a, a hitch available for this one. Um, but we'll find out, I guess, as start, people start to, to get more orders of it. Uh, do you think Faraday Future Cars will replace the Tesla? Yeah, no, no, not even close. Uh, I, I'm for competition. And, and you know, a lot of people I talk with at Tesla are for the competition as well. They want Faraday to be successful and they want Lucid to be successful because really the goal is about transitioning over to electric. The goal isn't about, you know, Tesla being the dominant player in the world on making every single car. Just it's not, not sustainable. It can't work that way. So, yeah. Um, they definitely, um, you know, they and a lot of people I talk to there, uh, you know, want them to be successful, as do I, because I think the goal is for us to switch over to electric cars, not necessarily, um, you know, just certain um, electric cars. So, yeah, there's that. When would Tesla come to South Africa? That's a good question. Uh, I don't know. You should tweet at Elon. Maybe he'll he'll help you out with that one. Uh, will the Model 3 suit 3X toddler car seats? Ooh, three, like like three X is the size or three toddler car seats. If the answer is three toddler car seats, no. The three X toddler car seat, I would say no as well. Uh, so no, I'm just gonna go with no. Thanks for the question. Uh, white interior. Okay, this is a good question. Um, that's not listed as an upgrade option for the interior and every single one of the 30 there was an all black interior. So they may not have uh, different interior colors. You may have to go uh, after the fact. What's up, Soul Jessen? Thanks for, for joining me. Uh, M. Taylor asked, key card thoughts? Man, uh, okay, so I think what I heard um, is that you can, it'll actually be Bluetooth to your phone. It uses something called Bluetooth LE. Uh, and uh, my buddy Austin Evans did a video on that, which I would go check out if you haven't. Um, and he kind of went into more detail there. And I think, I'm guessing MKBHD will have one soon. Um, I like that it's Bluetooth and I just walk up to the car because if I have my phone, it works. Um, I don't like the idea because they say the key card is a backup. I really don't like the idea of having to like pull that out and tap or anything like that. That seems uh, ridiculous to me. Um, so I'm hoping that the Bluetooth thing just works well and, and that's that. So James Anthony asks, 
Hey, Ben, any idea if the back trunk is big enough to fit a golf kit without folding rear seats horizontally or at least diagonally? Yeah, it should be. Go check out the Tesla geeks. I think they were the only ones that got them to open the trunk um, and take a look inside. And, and it was pretty big. So there. Uh, let's see what else. Key card, key card. Um, which is the first production cost on the estimator indicating? Yeah, yeah. Okay, Butch asks... Uh, why is the first production cost on the estimator indicating 49k, not 44k? Well, uh, I I believe uh, I believe this has been confirmed, but I asked and haven't got an answer myself. Was that's the 44k for the longer range battery, obviously, and then 5,000 for the premium package. Again, I probably myself probably wouldn't get the premium package if I were buying it. You know, if I had my choice, because I also want to get uh, enhanced autopilot and a uh, different color and different wheels so, unless i can use my wheels from my other tesla so yeah there you go uh joe asks how do you pay for the model 3 um with money i don't know what else um is there enough trunk room for a dead body probably not um when you think that the electric cars will be more prominent than gas powered cars 2026 uh and it depends what you mean by prominent uh, but I think 2021 it'll be, will be the tipping point. And so five years after that is when we'll really see it happen. Uh, the extended range price is 44 grand, but at even but 49 on the website. What does this mean? Yeah, that, I think that's the extra premium package. Um, ah, okay. I want to I want to answer this question because uh, I I want to do a video on this. Um, and I, I know we're coming up on the hour and some of you guys have got to get back to work. So I appreciate everyone that's joined me so far. Please subscribe if you haven't. Get on the email list, all those kind of things. Um, so uh, Zohar, uh, sorry if I pronounce your, your name wrong. Um, hey, what happens if the car in self-driving mode arrives at a situation that someone will die for sure? But it has two options. Take the life of people in the car or the people outside the car. So uh, actually, here, l let me see if I can pull this up because... This is, um, the, the, the question is an ethics question, uh, utilitarian, and it's a classic ethics question. Um, let me see. Uh, utilitarianism ethics, I think it's called. So uh, this is a, cla uh, a classic ethics question, um, and it's an ethical theory. And so the idea is, is that you, the, the, if you are a utilitarian, um, you would choose the option that, uh, that saves the most people. But the question, see, people are asking this question because they think like, aha, you can't have a self-driving car because it will make the wrong decision. So I ask you and I ask everyone else that wonders this thing or has this like, aha, that's, you know, but you can't do it because that, they have that same thing. What would you do? Would you kill yourself and your family instead of a school bus of children? What would you choose? Because there isn't a right answer, right? Like if you killed yourself and your family, oh my God, you're a horrible person. Oh, but you saved the, you know, the, the school bus of kids. Or if you killed the school bus of kids, oh my God, you're such a horrible person. Hey, but this is me and my family. I love my family. I got to save us. So it's the same problem. So it is a funny thing. Um, I, and I want to do a video on it because there are some um, really great examples. I think that are like centuries old. So this question, uh, maybe for some people that have never heard it before, seems novel or clever or something like that. But really, it's 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 nothing new. Um, and and I would ask you, what would you do? Uh, w w would you kill yourself and your family, or would you kill the school bus of children? Um, that, that that's what it comes down to. Uh, the the machine is only going to do whatever uh, we program it to do. Um, I, I don't think we'll see general uh, intelligence in machines for a long, long time. Um, so yeah, I don't know. We're a capitalist country here in the, in in America. Probably save the people in the car because they're the paying customers, and you know that's how it works. So, sorry for my uh, my, my my drab uh, Elon moment of uh, of a dystopian future like that. So there you go. Okay, guys. Well, I appreciate everyone uh, for joining me yet again. Uh, don't forget, you can go to teslanomics.co, get on my email list, make sure that you get your questions asked in advance um, of this so that way I don't miss any of those. Plus, you get all kinds of other things just like the latest updates and random videos of me playing guitar, which you know happens sometimes. Um, as well as other deals, you know, if I have a promotion going on with anyone, as well as announcements about new products, which I am actually starting to work on. So uh, I, I love
love you all, and I will see you back here. By the way, we have a new schedule Monday, Wednesday, and Friday now, so you get even more of me in your feed. So I hope to see you there on Wednesdays and Fridays starting this week. So adios, uh, próximo vez, y uh, bueno, chao.